Uh, but I want to share with you the Lord's burden for the prison. In Psalm 102, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says this, For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. And so the Lord, he's looking down, he's taking notice of things that are going on on the earth. And notice in verse 20, the first thing that he sees, the first thing he notices, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death. Amen. Listen, I'm glad that God hears the groaning of the prisoner. And listen to me, I, 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 am, I am like all of you. I believe in justice. If somebody commits a crime, like, like many of them have done, if not all of them have done, you know, there needs to be a punishment for that. We believe in that. But, you know, God knows what's in their heart. He knows what's, what brought them to that place in their life. He hears that groaning within their soul. And I think about, let's say, a young man, maybe 20 years old, grew up on a, the bad area of Atlanta or New York or pick your city. Uh, the bad, Berea, let's just say he grew up there. And his mother, his father, both in prison, in and out, his whole life. His cousins, all in jail, all in gangs. His sisters and his brothers, all living that same life. He's never heard a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All he's ever known from all his influences in his life are negative, uh, that, uh, against the word of God, vile, horrible influences. And that's all he's ever been exposed to. And let's say with it, whether he really wanted to or not. Just to survive in that kind of life, he joins the gang, does something he, he shouldn't have done, and he gets put in prison for 20 years. First 20 years of his life are spent in a broken situation without the hope of the gospel, never having been exposed to it. In the next 20 years of his life, he spends behind bars in prison. But you know what? God sees that young man's heart, and he knows what, what brought him to that place in his life. And then he sends somebody in through Rock of Ages or another prison ministry, and they knock on that cell, and they say, Sir... Can I tell you about Jesus Christ? Can I give you a gospel track? Can I tell you what the Lord has done for me? And we're able to share the gospel with that individual. And that young man gets born again. The first 40 years of his life ruined because of sin. Under bad influences. And he made decisions from that reason. And the whole rest of his eternity is going to be spent with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's been born again. Amen. Listen, God hears the groaning of the prisoner. And to loose those that are appointed to death. And you know what? We need to have a heart for broken lives. And I want to preach a message on that thought this evening. If you'll turn in your Bible to Mark chapter number 5. Amen. Mark chapter number 5. I want to preach a message on having compassion on the devil's prisoners. Having compassion on the devil's prisoners. Mark chapter 5. And while you turn there, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that it is to be here tonight. I thank you for the good spirit that I feel in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you are here. And, uh, Lord, you've given us liberty. And uh, I pray, Father, for this church. I pray for the pastor that you would strengthen him. Answer the prayer of his heart, Lord, as he shared with me earlier, that he wants a young man, a young family to come in here and uh, just to help uh, see some, uh, some people come in, some young people again, uh, just to see this church reach its full potential. Uh, that you would have it to do in this day. So, Father, would you answer that prayer? Lord, would you continue to bless the ministry of this church and help them as they reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ? And, Lord, as we look at your word tonight, Father, would you hide me behind your cross? Lord, would you fill me with your spirit? And, Lord, may we hear from you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mark chapter 5, starting in verse number 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying, and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, 
My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. And, heard, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when, when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. And take notice. And hath had compassion on thee. Listen, I want to preach tonight on having compassion on the devil's prisoners. Church, we live in a, a wicked world. Uh, it's no mystery. You know way better than me. I'm 34 years of age. I've seen that much of life. Y'all have seen a great, a great amount of time longer than I have. And you've seen a progression in this country. You've seen this country go from being a strong nation with morals all the way to the decline that we're in today. You've watched that. You've seen a time where you could leave your house unlocked at night and you didn't have to worry about somebody breaking in. If you left some valuables in your car, you didn't have to worry about somebody robbing those things. You've seen a day like that. Well, today is far different than the day that you remember back in those days. Listen, we live in a bad world, a wicked place. But here's the thing. How are we going to keep our hearts tender to a lost world if this world is getting more wicked and more wicked and more wicked by the day? Listen, the devil, he has placed snares all in our society. The devil is running rampant in homes and in the church. He is, he is doing his work, unfortunately, in this day. Greater probably than at any time that we've seen. He is running rampant in this day. You know, the Bible tells us, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You know, that's a true statement, and we find that in our hearts today. It is hard to love people in sin. It's hard to love a world that is against God. It is hard to love a world that is heading in the wrong direction against everything that we stand for, everything that this Bible preaches and says. It's hard to love this world. And I, I make that statement, and you would probably make that statement. It's tough. But God has called us to love this world, Amen. to get the gospel into their hands. And listen, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to have compassion on a lost world. In Jude, the Bible says, in some, having compassion, making a difference. Compassion makes a difference in people's yes. lives. Listen, we go into the prison and we carry the gospel to these broken people. And you know what they tell us all the time? Thank you for coming. Thank you for caring about us. Thank you for loving us enough to drive all the way here, to take your time, and to come here and, and share this message with us. And you know what? That's having compassion. You know, having compassion on those that the world has forgotten all about. And church, we need to have a heart of compassion Amen. in this day that we live. Amen. Because if you don't, you won't go out here and tell your neighbor that they're, that they're going to die and go to hell if they don't get born again. If you don't, you won't tell those people that you work with or those people in your family that Jesus Christ is still the answer for all their heart's need. And if you don't, listen, their blood is going to be on our hands. We need, to have a, we need to have a heart of compassion for lost sinners today. And as we look in this scripture, we see a man who the Lord Jesus Christ had compassion upon. This man was in a horrible condition. If you read the whole Bible, I don't think you'll find a man in a worse condition than this man. There's not one of us who would want to change places with him. There's not one of us who would wish this upon anyone that we know, that they would be living in this condition. And yet Jesus Christ had compassion on him. And made a difference in his life. And brought him all the way out from the reality that he lived in for a long time. And uh, if we're going to have compassion on a broken world in sin, we need, to have, we need to learn some things from this passage of scripture tonight. First thing I want to take a look at, let's look at his condition. And while we look at his condition, put yourself in this man's shoes. 
Imagine that you are in this story, that you can see him, and just really allow this scripture to come into your heart and your mind. Verse number three says, who had his dwelling among the tombs. This man, he did not live in a normal home. He didn't live in normal society. This man, he's living outside of society. He's living up in the mountains. He's living in the tombs. He's living in a place that we bury our, our loved ones that have passed on. Just imagine that with me. This is his reality. He doesn't come into church and enjoy fellowship and communion with brethren. He doesn't go home on Sunday evening and enjoy time with the meal with his family. He doesn't get to fellowship and, and maybe go golf or go fishing or whatever he likes to do with his friends. That's not his reality anymore. This man is all by himself. Well, he has one other friend just like him. But he's all separated from normal society, from those that he loves. And he is dwelling in the tombs. That's his reality. That's how he dwells. He doesn't have a normal place to lay his head. The Bible says in, in the latter part of verse number three, And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. We see this man, he has a supernatural strength. There is not one of us who has the power within us to break chains and to break fetters. There's, I, don't, I don't know anybody that's ever been able to do that. But this man, he had this supernatural ability to do this because of all the devils that were in him, giving him that ability. You know, there's people that take steroids and other performance enhancing drugs. And they try to reach that level of ability that is beyond the natural ability of a man. And it takes a real toll upon their body because of the, those drugs that they put in there. And uh, you know, oftentimes they have a short lifespan because of that. You know, I know people, we go into prison and uh, we, we witness to them and they may be 40 years old, but they look like they're 60 years old. They look so much older than they really are because the life of sin that they lived has taken them to a place that is, that is just wore out on their body. And listen, imagine the toll that it must have taken on this man. Imagine the stress that he looks like. Just imagine, just, just imagine a man. He probably hasn't showered in a long time. Uh, in, in Luke, the Bible tells us that he's naked. Listen, his hair is probably long. He hasn't, been, he hasn't been shaven. I mean, he just looks like a wild man. And we see that in verse number four at the end. It says, neither could any man tame him. He's probably just like a wild beast. Listen, the Bible tells us in the book of James that uh, all manner of animal has been tamed by man. But listen, this man, he could not be tamed by anyone. Oftentimes, they tried to bind him and put him in prison, put him in a mental institution or whatever, maybe just to settle him down, to integrate him back into society. Could not happen. The, the, the rage that's going on him, the, the indwelling of all these devils that is in him, has taken him to a place that is beyond normal. And you know it had to take a real physical toll upon his body. And it must have been just a horrible sight to see. Verse number 5 says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. This man was restless. Listen, always night and day. He's up at all hours of the night and day. Listen, I, I get a good night's sleep just about every night. It's hard to wake me up once I'm, once I'm out. It is hard to get me up. I enjoy that. And I hear, you know, that it gets a little tougher as you get older to get a good night's sleep. And, and I, you know, hope that's not your case, but it might be reality. So you might be able to identify a little bit with this man. Always night and day up using the bathroom or doing whatever because you can't rest. But this man, because of all the devils in him, because of the turmoil that he's under and the rage that he's under within him. Listen, he cannot rest night and day. He's always up. Listen, he's always roaming these mountains and roaming these tombs, crying and screaming and howling and cutting himself with stones. You know, I had a friend back in my, my broken days, and he had cuts all up and down his arms and his legs. And I asked him one time, I said, why do you do that to yourself? And he said, because I'm on so much pain on the inside, the only relief that I can find is if I cut myself. It makes me feel a little bit better. You know, that's, a, that's, a, that's of the devil. The devil wants to cause affliction and pain to an individual, making them think that there's no way they can find any kind of peace or relief but to cut themselves. And you know, that's what this man, his whole life is about. Look at it. And cutting himself with stones. He's a danger to himself. 
because he's under so much stress because of this legion of devils within him, the only way he can find relief is to cut himself to try to find some kind of relief. Listen, it's a horrible, horrible condition. If you'll turn in the book of Luke uh, to chapter number 8, or if you turn there or not, I'm going to continue on looking at his condition. In verse number 27, the Bible says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. That little phrase, which had devils long time. Listen, it wasn't the week before that he found himself in this condition. It wasn't the month before. We're not given an amount of time, so I don't want to cross a line that scripture doesn't go to. But this man was in this condition for a long time. A long time he's naked. A long time he's homeless, living in the mountains and living in the tombs. A long time he's under so much rage within himself, he's cutting himself. He's howling and roaming all hours of the night and day with no rest. <laughs> A long time. And listen, as hard as it is to hear this message, it's harder to preach it, I promise you. It's not easy to go through what this man's life is like and just say these things. But you know, this was his reality. Imagine if this was your son. Imagine if this was your daughter or your grandchild. Ima imagine if this is their life. That it's just a hopeless situation. That all of society has just cast to the side and said, there's no hope for them anymore. Just leave them up there in the mountains. We'll have to deal with his howling because he's just a wild man that no one can tame. Listen, imagine if that was somebody you knew or even yourself tonight. And listen, if we're going to have compassion on a lost world, we're going to have to see things from their perspective. We're going to have to see life from their, their angle. And listen, there are people that we meet in the prisons that didn't grow up like we grew up. Listen, maybe more similar to me in a broken home, but they didn't grow up in a good life. Listen, everything they ever knew growing up was just a broken life. Every influence they ever had, many of them, just a broken situation. And it led them to a path that they're on today. And listen, God cares. He hears the groaning. We looked at it in Psalm 102. And listen, Jesus had compassion on individuals whose society and the world had said there is no hope for them. Jesus had compassion on him. Jesus made a difference. And listen, if we're, going to have if we're going to reach a world that is getting worse and worse and worse, we're going to have to see things from their eyes and see their condition and have compassion. Number two, I want to look at the cause of this man's situation. In verse number 29, the Bible says, For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Listen, the Bible says, for oftentimes it had caught him. Listen, this man had been captured by the unclean spirits that indwelled him. And then he was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Listen, you know, if you look in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three accounts we find of this man, you won't find anywhere in the Bible that he asked for this by his lifestyle. You won't find that he was living a perverse life and brought this about of his own, of his own choices. You won't find that. Instead, you find here, it caught him. The devil drove him into the wilderness. Listen, Jesus said in, in the book of uh, Mark 5 that he had, a, he had friends that he was to go back to and be a witness to. So here's this man, he's going through his life, and all of a sudden, for a reason we're not told in Scripture, this devil said, I'm going to capture this individual, and I'm going to drive his life, and I'm going to ruin his life, and I'm going to take him into the wilderness, and I'm going to ruin him. Listen, the devil captured his life. And I'm telling you, listen, there are people that are lost in this world that the devil has exploited their life, and he has taken advantage of them, and he has captured them listen now i want to make a statement you may, we make all the choices that we make in this life i don't believe the statement the devil made me do it and i want to be careful with that tonight because when you preach this it almost sounds like you're saying that the devil didn't make this man do anything but the devil took advantage of him the devil captured him the devil drove him into the wilderness the devil was exploiting this man for his own purposes you know, we find uh, the conversation between this man and the Lord Jesus Christ, and you don't even hear his own words. You hear the devils in him talking to Jesus Christ. Listen, we don't know if this man, if he was in enough sanity to even talk his own words or think his own thoughts anymore. 
Because this, the, what we see from Scripture is the words coming out of his mouth are from the legion of devils that is within him. Listen, they had taken his life and captured it and taken him into the wilderness, and they were ruining his life. Now listen, I, I believe as a born-again Christian, you cannot be possessed with the devil. I don't believe the Holy Spirit of God is going to share residence with the devil. Amen? He's not going to do that. But you can absolutely be oppressed by the devil from the outside in. And listen, this man though, we have no indication that he was saved. We know this is before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so the time period is, is a whole other dispensation. Uh, Jesus had not yet broken the power of the devil. He had not yet taken uh, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He had not yet ascended and rose from the dead. So there's a lot that is different in this day. And I believe just like in the book of Job, God will put a hedge about his people. We find with Peter that, that the devil wanted to sift him, but Jesus prayed for him. So we find that with God's people, there is a blessing upon them. But you know what we don't find in Scripture? That upon the, that those that are not following the Lord and seeking after him, that they have that spiritual protection. And listen, we don't know, but I'm telling you from Scripture, this unclean spirit captured this man and he drove him into the wilderness and he was exploiting his life. I want to show you from Scripture another similar story. Uh, if you look in Mark chapter number 9, Mark chapter number 9, uh, verse number 17, the Bible says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long, how long is it ago that this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Imagine that. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, here's another plea, have compassion on us and help us. Imagine with me, listen, I have young children. I couldn't imagine being in this father's situation, desperate for a deliverance for his child. That from, a t from the time of a child, this spirit captured his life and tried to destroy him physically. Tried to cast him into fire, tried to cast him into water, tried to literally kill this child. And listen, you won't find anywhere that this child did anything to bring it about in his life. You can't tell me he was living a life of immorality and he brought this on in his own choosing. That's, that's nonsense. The spirit took control of this young man and he tried to kill him. And listen, this father, he is, ple he is pleading to Jesus, please have compassion. If there's something you can do for us, have compassion on us. And listen, there's people out in this world today, listen, they have broken homes because the devil has captured their home. Listen, there may be people here today, and I don't want to touch a sore spot in your heart, but maybe you have children that are wayward today. The devil has captured their life, and he is exploiting their life. And you, like this man, are pleading, if you can do anything, have compassion on us. We don't want to see our family go down the wrong path. We don't want to see our home continue to be broken up because the devil's influence and the world's influence on our families. Listen, there's a world out there that the devil has captured lives and he is doing whatever he pleases in their life. And we know that to be true. I want to read this scripture in uh, 2 Timothy chapter number uh, 2, verse 24 through 26. It illustrates it a little bit further. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And here's our verse. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. The devil, the devil has a will for people's lives. And listen, he plants a snare in their path. And that person unknowingly steps into that snare. And they've been taken captive by the devil at his own will. But I'm glad the recipe to get out of that. Listen, if they will acknowledge the truth, God will grant them repentance. And they can recover themselves out of that snare of the devil. 
Listen, we have the word of God, amen. We have the cure. We have the answer that can, that can see these lives that the devil has exploited. We can see them come out of that situation, amen. So we see in our scripture tonight a man who is in a horrible condition, among the worst in all the Bible, a condition that there's not one of us here that would wish this upon anybody that we know. We find the cause, the unclean spirit captured him, the devils drove this man into the wilderness, and they've exploited his life. But I'm glad that in our scripture we also find that there is a cure for this man's condition. There is a cure for this man's hopeless condition. And we find that in Matthew 4, Matthew 5, verse number 6. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Hey, listen, I'm glad that the power of Jesus Christ is greater than all the power of the Amen. devil. Listen, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Listen, our Lord, he is a name which is above every name. Listen, he has been given authority over everything in heaven and earth and under the earth. Listen, he, he has a name and a position that is exalted above all other powers and authorities in this world. The name of Jesus Christ. And listen, he is greater than the devil. Amen. All that the devil's done, all the exploitation of these people that he's done. The power of Jesus Christ is the cure for this man's condition. And listen, Jesus Christ brought this man out of a hopeless condition. He brought him out of a place that everyone else had, had given up hope. He brought the cure to him. But listen, I want to point this out because this is probably the most important part of all the message tonight. For in order to have compassion on a world that is bound under the power and influence of the devil, that is getting worse and worse and worse, listen, we've got to take the cure to where they are. Listen, Jesus, th this man, he found deliverance in his situation. He found change in his situation. But Jesus had to come to where he was to bring, that to bring that cure to him. Listen, we cannot just sit here in this church and expect all the people that are under the power and influence of the devil to come through the back doors of this church and hear the message right here. We've got to take it to where they are. We've got to take the cure. Listen, Jesus Christ, he is still the answer for all the problems in this world. Listen, he was my cure. He was your cure. And listen, he was this man's cure. But somebody's going to have to carry that gospel to them. Listen, they're never going to come out of the mountain. Listen, they've been driven into the wilderness of the devil. They're never going to come down and come through this church and hear it here. We're going to have to take it to where they are at. We're going to have to take it to them. Listen, I just want to say this. Deliverance was absolutely possible for this man. He was, in a, he was in this condition for a long time, Luke 8, said, Luke 8 tells us. But he found deliverance. He found salvation. He found hope from his condition. But it was only possible because Jesus came to where he was. Had Jesus never made the trek to that man's city into where he was, he would never have been delivered from that state of, in that state of mind and that condition. But because he had compassion... Listen, you find in the story, there's not one other person that he did any miracle in that place to, but that one man who everybody else said was beyond help. He found hope in that situation. And listen, church, we have the great responsibility as the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ with the hope of salvation, the message of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no, there is, there is no, one, can come to him. no one can come to the Father but by me, Jesus said. We have to take that message to them, and it's our responsibility. So church, if we're going to have compassion on a lost world, we're going to have to see the condition that they're in. It's a, it's a bad condition. It's a bad way. The devil has brought this about in many, many lives today. But listen, there is a cure, and it still works, amen? But we've got to take it to where they are. And listen, it is still possible, even being in that condition for a long time. Some of you, you've had family members that have been under the power and influence of the devil for a long time. But just like this man who had him for a long time, there's hope in your situation. Don't quit praying. Don't quit seeking God to bring deliverance to that person in your life that you know. There's people that you can make a difference in if you'll have compassion. And some having compassion, making a difference. Amen.